புண்ணில் மட்டும் கை வைக்கிறது கைய ஓடிச்சிருவேன் ஏமா காட்சி எல்லாம் கொடுக்க அவ்வளவா போட்டுக்கிட்டா போடுறது இங்க அது வந்து பார்த்துக்கிறது இப்படி இந்த பிள்ளை எல்லாம் என்ன சொல்றது அந்த மனசன் அப்படி இருந்தா இந்த பிள்ளை இப்படி இருக்கு சாப்பிடலாம் இல்ல கைண்ட்லி மியூட் ஆல் தார்டிசிபன் i moved, muted you also you, you can unmute ma'am sign ma'am okay sir so shall we start i am ready uh, you want to wait for a minute before others also can join then we okay. can start we still have one minute for one minute more we are having Yeah, we can start now. It's 11. Good morning, one and all gathered in this uh, faculty development program. Let's start our session with the blessings of Almighty. A'uzu billahi minash shaitan ar-razim. Bismillahi r-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna ahtayna kal kawsar. Fasalli bi rabbika vanhar. Inna saniyaka uval habtar. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. indeed we have granted you so pray to your lord and sacrifice to him alone indeed your enemy is the one cut off sadakallahu alaihi the most gracious and the most merciful so next i hand over the session to our speaker mr ishwaran ram to continue with the third day of uh, faculty development program Hello. thank you so much ma'am good morning uh, very good morning to all of you Uh, very happy to be back for the third and final day uh, the concluding day of the uh, presentation um i i'm i'm sure and i hope uh, the, the first two days uh, you were able to understand 
uh, what was uh, I what you all about to be back um, and you got a fair idea of uh, what is uh, how you can utilize this how it can benefit you and um, how this is going to drive uh, the world in the next decade or even more so i've tried my best to put together um, it is very difficult to cover everything in just 3 days it's not possible so i've tried my best to put together whatever uh, is uh, required uh, from faculty standpoint uh, not just from the student standpoint in terms of understanding the overall architecture the areas that uh, uh, you can take it to so that's how i have structured my 3 day uh, presentation okay i'm going to record the session now um, so that uh, this can be made available later for people in terms of understanding the overall architecture the areas that uh, yeah. you can take it so today uh, the third day third and concluding day we are going to talk about uh, uh, what is left over basically uh, the case studies I, i wanted to take you through a couple of case studies to know how uh, the iot is making a difference today um, it is actually Um, both b2b and b2c when i say b2b i'm sure these terms you must be familiar with uh, business to business as well as business to uh, consumer so on both sides uh, this is uh, uh, being used and this is very useful and let us see a couple of case studies i have tried to uh, pick uh, fairly understanding case studies so that everybody will understand because as a consumer how we will accept or how we will be adapting to the iot that is how i have tried to pass go through and pick up a couple of case studies so let me take you through those case studies now case studies so that everybody will understand because as a consumer how we will accept or how we will be adapting to the iot that is how i have tried to pass go through and pick up a couple of case studies so let me i hope you all can see my screen yes sir we can see thank you I hope you all can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Okay. So I briefly touched upon uh, what is the broad agenda for the day. Now let me give you. Uh, Uh, a detailed thing as to what i am looking for and how we are going to uh, take it up today uh, basically um, one is on the transportation side and the other one is on the uh, uh, hospitality uh, hotel uh, management side uh, i chose this uh, because uh, as i said uh, in both we are actually consumers okay uh, we use the road we use our vehicles and we also uh, no uh, visit hotels we stay in hotels so it's it's a question of uh, how we put ourselves in that position to understand uh, to appreciate that how iot is going to help us so that is the way i have tried to position the case studies so the first one uh, to start with it is going to be um, on uh, usage based insurance so what does it mean Uh, we need to understand what is usage based insurance which we are going to see in the uh, coming slides and then the second uh, uh, slide second case study is going to be on uh, transforming guest experience we all go to hotels we have stayed in hotels and how iot can make a difference to the yes stay in a hotel some of you are asking me is it possible to have a demo i don't know how a demo can be done but i have tried to uh, Uh, I've tried, I'm going to show you something where uh, how a guest reacts or how how a guest feels with IoT based experience. So I'm going to show you that I picked up uh, uh, from one of uh, the websites which I'm going to show you. So let me move on to uh, the first of the two case studies, uh, usage based insurance. What does it mean? It is actually one of the very interesting new models. i wouldn't say new per se started sometime in 2012 13 uh, to be precise and it is gaining momentum lot of insurance companies lot of consumers um, are moving towards the ai model especially abroad india you know it is always a challenge for us to say for us to bring it as a rule 
uh, being the you know, considering the size of the country and the population we have people need to understand people need to have the technology to be able to adapt to this so we are still behind on this but uh, not uh, this is being one of the uh, um, widely accepted models for the uh, car owners and the insurance companies of course in turn it also benefits the iot service providers so what is it how does sift work now we all know right we, we we all have vehicles most of us have vehicles either a two wheeler or a four wheeler we use it regularly and um, we also pay insurance like a vehicle insurance not like insurance now we all some of us also drive without insurance which is actually a huge risk we should never do that so typically there is a insurance value that is arrived at for the vehicle based on the vehicle's value vehicle value gets depreciated on a yearly basis some of us also drive and based on the current value as it is called wdv return down value typically uh, based on the current value of the vehicle a percentage of insurance is applied towards various components and then amount is arrived at which we pay this is what we are all used to um, from the time i started uh, using a vehicle i have also been paying using this model only okay. now what are we going to see and then amount is Yeah, okay pay as you drive means using a vehicle i have also been paying using this model only i drive 1000 kilometers a month 12000 kilometers a year okay okay so my car my two wheeler goes through a particular warranty right now there is another car a, a, a tourist car which runs almost entire day so that car drives about Runs about twenty-five thousand kilometers a month, so close to three 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 hundred thousand kilometers in a year. So obviously, that car has a larger wear and tear compared to a private car. Now, so based on the usage, based on how much you drive, a particular premium is calculated and applied. So obviously, this actually was a model which came long ago. This was not something that came now. But I'm trying to explain this to you first. Now. here the problem is or the drawback is whether you are a good driver or a bad driver whether you are a safe driver or a rash driver okay still the vehicle insurance is calculated the same way problem is or you understand somebody who is a very safe driver okay uh, he drives 10000 kilometers a month urunna kudutare anga oru thar 80 rupees kudukkaraare neenga kuda solreela ரெகுலர் <laughs> meeting with an accident is very very less compared to a driver who is very rash he always drives at 80 plus irrespective of the traffic that is there you know he doesn't care about other vehicles he drives extremely fast and rash he cuts across vehicles and goes so that driver that car has a higher risk of meeting with an accident so how do you determine this how do you identify this today it is possible 10 years ago it was not possible so based on the usage of the vehicle they were charging a particular premium so now how do you go one step further what they have done is there are different patterns of driving which are captured using iot devices which are fitted into the car and those parameters are considered while defining an insurance policy amount what are those parameters typically let us assume for a tourist vehicle the uh, uh, traffic uh, that is the speed limit is set as 50 km per hour now when this is the limit that you are setting and how many times as the vehicle crossed 50 km okay or on a highway you are allowed to go at say 80 90 km per hour or 100 km per hour how many times as it cross under plus that's one of the things hard acceleration what does it mean when you start in first gear on a high you start at 10 you don't you don't hit 20 30 40 then you gradually move to the second gear you hit 
third, thirty, four, forty, fifth, fifty. Then gradually you accelerate. In first gear, you should not touch thirty, forty. That is called hard acceleration. Not braking. Sudden brake. We all must have done some time or other. Suddenly somebody crosses the road. You are forced to apply brake. Those things are okay. But you cannot always. For example, you are driving towards a signal. You know there is a signal coming in next hundred meters. You have to obviously come down from fourth gear to third gear, then to second gear. By the time you come near fifty meters to the signal, you should be in second gear. Then gradually you come to neutral and stop. That should be your driving pattern. You cannot come up to fifty meters in fourth gear and suddenly come to neutral and stop. That is not good driving. That is not safe driving. That is also not good for the vehicle. It's called hard braking. Hard cornering is basically when you drive. You need to park it properly. You need to take a turn properly. You cannot suddenly keep driving and suddenly go stop the vehicle in a particular spot. You need to put an indicator when you when you want to park. All those things are part of the hard part. Even taking a turn. How do you take a turn? Whether you when you when you drive, you come, you are going to take a right turn. You come to second gear. You stop for a minute, put the indicator, then you take a turn. That is the right way of driving. You cannot come at forty fifty suddenly put a hard brake and then take a turn. That is not a good drive. So, based on this, okay, based on these patterns, the insurance premium was calculated. Okay. Now, how how is this part possible? You have multiple ways in which you can do, which we are going to see in the next slide. They were coming out with the premium based on only these parameters and coming out. The premium was calculated. So, for example, now let us take the first first model where a safe driver and a hard driver, both of them were paying the same thing. Now, safe driver who doesn't take a hard turn, who doesn't apply hard brake, who doesn't do hard acceleration, he pays less premium because he is safe driver and he is taking care of the vehicle also safely. Now, the other driver who is always known for rash driving, because of that vehicle is. Likely to get damaged faster, so obviously there is a wear and tear which is going into the vehicle. So I am going to apply a larger insurance for vehicle. Now these data, all these data are populated from an IoT device which is fitted into the car, or from the mobile-based sensor which can be emitted to the server. We will see that in the coming slides. Now the third model or fourth model is manage how you drive. This is actually. Very good. One step ahead, one step more than pay how you drive. Now, apart from the traditional mechanical parameters that are taken into account, in the final model, they also take some of the real-time alerts and suggestions. What does it mean? When you drive, do you sleep? When you drive, do you operate your phone? When you drive, do you turn back and talk to somebody? Okay, when you drive, you feel very tired and fatigued. You all have a fatigue. Now, these are the things that IoT device can observe in you and then alert you, keep alerting you. And a drive that you do for about say five hundred kilometers in a day, if you have talked to somebody, if you have operated mobile three times during your drive, IoT device can identify that and then immediately it can alert you. It can be added as a negative score on you. How does it do? There are various means in which it can be done. The moment you take a phone, your driving changes. Okay, your pattern changes. When you feel tired, when you feel sleepy, your driving pattern changes. How does it do? Okay, you talk to somebody and drive. Your driving pattern changes. It is never the same. You try, you try operating a toy at home. Okay. And you also try working, or you also try watching a TV. Your concentration level on both will come down. Whereas you try operating a toy alone, or you try operating or you try watching a TV alone, the concentration on that task will be full or near full. The moment you try to do two things at a time, the concentration level goes down. It is distributed. We 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 always talk about multitasking, etc., etc. But multitasking can be done only to some extent. Again, with a limited, with a lower level of concentration level and quality. Let us understand that. We 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 always talk about multitasking, etc., etc. Okay. Now now let us uh, let us let us go through how this um, 
how your drive model uh, is uh, implemented how this is tracked and how the data is collected and how the insurance premium is levied let us go let us, uh, let, us let us go through how this as i told you some time ago there are various mechanical uh, uh, mechanical options mechanical parts or mechanical actions that we perform in the car that are monitored by an iot device collected through a sensor and then it is passed to the cloud the insurance company also gets a, gets that and then on a daily basis at the end of the day a score card is generated for the driver who is using that car and then it is added and then now you can ask me i'm sure this will be one of the questions what if two drivers drive the same car yes in that case what happens is the driver behavior is also captured now but you can ask it is actually the car for which the big insurance is done so yes if two people drive the car and one person drives at an efficiency of 60% and another does at 60% what 80% and 60% then obviously the average efficiency level is going to be applied to calculate the car okay and still there are various incentives such as etc which are calculated for the driver they will be awarded subsequent but as far as the vehicle is concerned even if multiple drivers drive it is one premium that is calculated for the car or two wheeler based on their driving part they will be awarded subsequent yeah i told you that fatigue monitoring is one of the systems right you all of you must have uh, traveled from your native to chennai or from chennai to other places um anyway overnight you must have traveled in omnibuses super deluxe buses sleeper ac coaches etc now you see there there will always be two drivers at least in private uh, buses why do you need two drivers because they should not be affected by fatigue the mental strain and the physical strain that the body takes when you drive is so huge and you are responsible for 40 or passengers inside so they need to get adequate rest so they are given an alternate right to drive that is to ensure that you don't become fatigued same way when you have uh, this uh, um, travel agency vehicles which you take uh, invariably when you go you may not have an alternate driver with, with you right one driver comes with you so you have enough break to drive during the day and take a break during the night manage your timing accordingly now what happens in this case is a driver who drives there is a limitation right anybody somebody who is very young probably can drive 500 meters at a stretch somebody who is 40 plus 50 plus may not be able to drive that because the body takes some toll so the fatigue is bound to happen early so this is being monitored through the device to ensure that mentally and physically the person is still fresh to be able to drive third this is drowsiness yeah you can sleep off as you drive you can sleep off so this is very dangerous right so how how is this done as i told you based on any small abnormality that is detected during driving okay when you sleep obviously your driving is not going to be as smooth as when you are awake right so i drove I, mean, i came by car once from kerala to coimbatore ernakulam to coimbatore by car in the night um, i left at 12 past midnight from ernakulam which is about 4 and a half hours to coimbatore during that four and a half hours the driver would have slept at least five six times as a passenger i could not sleep the driver slept four five times and it was a highway so imagine the risk that you are putting into i had to stay awake to keep awakening awakening so how i was able to do i was sitting at the back still i knew he was sleeping because the driving pattern was changing so it is so dangerous that can be detected i had to stay awake to keep driver distraction detection yeah this is a very serious uh, thing a driver may be fresh or good to drive but you get distracted suddenly um, how many times have we seen this on the road we drive on the road we see an accident on the road then immediately our concentration goes there our vehicle hits somebody who is going to for us this has happened i have seen this happen we see a, a new movie ad on the road or there is some vip going on the road we don't care we immediately look at that immediately you go and hit the opposite way or somebody who comes behind does that that vehicle can hit our vehicle so the driver distraction is something that or there is some can happen to anybody it depends on our control how we manage i don't know how many of you are aware of this uh, there was one uh, uh, one 
telugu actor i think a uh, very famous telugu actor he passed away 2 3 years back in a road accident um I forgot the name of the person uh, he passed away on the road and he was driving a very good car okay very good high class car and uh, what happened was the the accident took place for two reasons one he was not wearing a seat belt second he was driving he was trying to take water bottle from behind okay the water bottle was kept at the back while he was driving he was trying to take the water bottle from behind so when he tried to take the water bottle from behind he lost concentration of the vehicle the vehicle it went and hit the median it toppled and he died so a distraction can be in any form okay and we talk on phone all of us do i have seen people on the two wheeler okay women on the two wheeler uh, driving past with the phone they are talking on the phone so how dangerous it is all these things can be detected by the iot devices all of us do i have seen people on the two wheeler okay now typically uh, uh, this is basically a summary of what we saw so far uh, there is a, a smartphone or a device attached a camera or something which can monitor you which is also there to understand your uh, psychological data set physical uh, uh, parameters coordinating all of that and then all those things are collected from your device the physical parameters the behavioral parameters your driving parameters mechanical operation mechanical usage of the vehicle are done through a smartphone or a device or iot device attached to the vehicle and the mental related parameters can be gathered through a camera both can be pushed to the uh, iot uh, said server for analysis analysis and then a scorecard is created so typically for each of the parameters there are a set of rules which are created algorithms are created okay for each of that and what at what frequency does it come then an alarm can even be raised at that point of time so all these things can be done both in terms of alerting the driver as well as in terms of safeguarding the vehicle and what at what frequency does it come then an alarm can even be raised at that point of time okay now um, the ubi solution is still maturing as i told you um, it is uh, there are various reasons to that uh, it started as a particular device being fitted into the car uh, which could only transmit data one way from there it has now become much more popular so as i told you in the in the us especially in the us and europe a lot of insurance companies a lot of uh, organizations lot of consumers are moving towards this this model so definitely this is something which is catching up big time there uh, but at the same time in india we are a long way okay let's understand that. so this is something that we saw okay data collection this is what i'm going to touch upon now this is interesting from iot standpoint but at the same time there are different means by which data is collected we all know what is a black box right we have heard of this term very often whenever a plane air crash happens there is a device that exists in the in the airplane that collects all the data okay including the pilot's conversation and uh, uh, any problems that the engine uh, engine has gone through everything is collected in the black box and uh, in a particular form a particular form and then the data is encoded decoded and then from there they are able to interpret what could have gone wrong whether it was a mechanical failure engine failure or whether it was a pilot's lapse of concentration imagine a pilot has gone to sleep he has become drowsy so or there is a, a tower issue what could have gone wrong i'm sorry i heard a voice okay so whatever be the cause the, the black box can detect it basically it is an electronic device Which is similar to what is installed into the flight may not be as you know um, um, aesthetic as what it is for the flight. It could be a smaller version. Basically, it will record the information related to the crashes, similar to what a plane a plane does, and your driving pattern. All of that are um, uh, recorded there, and uh, the data analysis is done only as an one day. This is basically a post mortem. You cannot do. real time analytics you cannot do a predictive analytics but you can only do post mortem activity after the crash some if a crash has happened or 
if you remove the black box at some point of time you can do analysis of it nothing more than that can be done then you have a dongle again this is also an electronic device which is fitted into the vehicle the vehicle's network uh, talks to this particular device uh, this is also a one way kind of a model little more sophisticated than the black box it is easy to configure easy to install um, so uh, here the data is passed to the um, server and from the server analysis can be done regularly unlike a black box where you need to take the black box out and do the analysis slightly better than the black box model then of course embedded uh, this is uh, we all know that uh, even today uh, you see you can go and check uh, um, uh, the high end cars or even mahindra uh, xuv 500 that has a lot of embedded devices which are attached to the embedded mahindra xuv 500 it has plenty of uh, i was part of the team uh, when they were doing the engineering product engineering also so they have done a lot of uh, work on embedded technology uh, so basically this is something that gives the manufacturers provide an embedded telematic equipment for the vehicle it could be a uh, examples could be a remote diagnostic device a navigation sensor which is there in the vehicle today and um, uh, anything related to the um, entertainment for info information to be on the maps etc that is also uh, create uh, given from there data is passed back to the server to do analysis which is there in the vehicle today and the fourth one yeah this is something that uh, we were all talking about in the last couple of days um, a smartphone alone may not be able to do this it requires additional sensors such as accelerometers all of that are required magnetometers are also used to be able to get that uh, uh, sensor uh, uh, input output from sensor which is basically uh, taken from this uh, uh, from this sensor from this device back to the server and then we'll be able to um, uh, ascertain the data here one of the things that can be done is uh, the behavioral events also can be collected for example how many times a driver could be hard brake complete the hard brake how many times did he do hard acceleration all these things can be uh, taken through this sensor because these sensors there are sensors attached to each of these devices i know there are five elements that form part of my driving so there are five different sensors that are created that are attached and each of those sensors will pass data to the mobile from the mobile to the wifi to the 5g connection or a 4g connection data is passed back to the server for analysis the so only problem is if my smartphone is having a problem or i switch off the smartphone and drive then this becomes a challenge so it is very essential that the drivers are instructed to ensure that the smartphone is in good condition the smartphone always receives data and they are able to send it back the next one is gps of course we all know what is gps gps is being the boom for us uh, as i told a couple of days ago the map the google maps you know um, takes us anywhere we want to go without even checking anybody so with the help of gps signal the speed the latitude in which the car is being driven longitude uh, what is the course of the car everything can be uh, uh, ascertained including the driver behavior the same thing that we are talking about earlier basically there are different big data analytics uh, algorithms are built into this built into the gps model and from there you are able to get that here the advantage is that uh, you can also get the location for example if a vehicle has met with an accident and uh, it is being tracked okay through gps and immediately you know okay this vehicle has met with an accident and some urgent required urgent service then the skewal is required even before the uh, driver or the passenger calls you you know that okay this vehicle has met with an accident and you can give a control uh, you can give a message to the control room so immediately it can be attended that's one thing that is advantageous it is not just about the insurance per se it is also about the passenger safety and uh, sometimes we would have we would have read so all the time we have read um, uh, car is hijacked okay uh, people in the car were thrown out of the car and somebody has stolen the car okay on the highways and we see a lot of um, uh, physical abuse sexual abuse happens on the car, on, the, on the road recently i read a couple of weeks back there was a spice jet pilot who was going to the airport uh, from his home at 1:30 am and in a busy delhi south delhi area where he was going he was attacked on the car four people came and he was attacked and then uh, he his his wrist was cut and they stole about 30000 rupees cash atm cards everything and then the disappear so all these things will be able to easily manage easily uh, uh, understand certain to see that 
GPS enabled tracking. It is not just GPS enabled, GPS enabled tracking. There is a difference. So, what do, what do I need to follow this? So, what is the advantage of this? Uh, uh, any model should have some benefit, right? otherwise nobody is going to come on. Right? So, basically, the commercial benefits to the insurance companies are there. Now, what happens is, everybody pays the same thing. Good car or a bad car, badly driven, well-driven cars, they pay the same thing. And trust me, the insurance premium they collect is very, very less. So, what happens is, when you, when, you, when you know that 50% uh, or 60% of the cars are not properly driven and I am collecting a low value for that car, I am at a loss. So obviously, I need to collect more to cover my risk. So the insurance companies are bound to get benefit. At the same time, somebody who is driving less, somebody who is very good in driving, he need not pay the same money as well. So obviously, it helps the consumer and it helps the insurance company as well. And of course, the entire community gets benefited. Then you know you are being monitored by a device. Obviously, you become more responsible, isn't it? When a policeman is there in the signal, he stops the vehicle. We never try to cross the road. We never try to jump the signal. The policeman is not there. Immediately, your brain tells us, though the red is there, though the signal is red, no policeman, nobody is going to catch me. I can. That comfort we automatically get. We become socially irresponsible at that point. We do that, right? We all have that. So, the moment you know you are being monitored, you are being tracked, you will want to be safe, you will want to be careful, you wouldn't want to pay that extra money, extra penalty to the police or insurance. So, yeah, this is what I was telling you. Potential cost savings to the responsible customers. And, um, yeah, this is something I told you a while ago. The technology enabled uh, monitoring also gives Road safety, road safety assistance. Potential Suddenly, I am I'm, I'm on the highway, my vehicle, um, uh, uh, there's a breakdown in the vehicle, yeah. or my or tire has become flat, or due uh, to an accident, I need an emergency road assistance, then immediately that is tracked, you can communicate, people are there the next minute to address it, to rescue you. That's something that is very easily done. Yeah, this is exactly what uh, uh, I was telling you. So it is also enabling the drivers to change their behavior. That is most important. See, one is, if you drive irresponsibly, you pay more. That is one thing. Secondly, when I know I am paying more because I am not driving well, obviously I will want to change. That's a human tendency, right? I wouldn't want to pay extra. Now, obviously I'm not going to have my job. Now, if I am a cab driver and I am continuously driving like this, my car, my owner is paying uh, 10,000 rupees extra, 5,000 rupees extra for the premium because of my driving is going to sack me. So obviously, I become more responsible to the family. I become responsible to myself and to my job. So obviously, I will want to be careful. So it changes me internally. In fact, um, I, I, I'm aware of this. There are, uh, uh, there are organizations, there are insurance companies. They give incentive to the drivers who drive safe. Who drive well. So it is not just the uh, rash drivers who get penalized, but also the good drivers get the reward. You know? When you drive safely, you get an incentive. So obviously, what you want to drive safely, it becomes an incentive for you. It becomes kind of a small bonus that you get. You may not get a huge money, still there is something to incentive, something to motivate. Then you drive yeah. safely. This is also very, very uh, uh, important. I was telling you some time ago, continuous tracking of the vehicle location both enhances both our safety as well as vehicle safety. When you know that you are, uh, there is a GPS which is monitoring, which is tracking you, you don't need to worry. Your vehicle cannot disappear. They will be able to Continuous tracking of the vehicle location. Both enhances both covered this. Okay. Yeah, this is also there. Now, using this GPS, real-time GPS, I can also give you satellite navigation. Today, there are cars which are fitted with satellite navigation. Okay. Not all the cars. Okay, high-end cars, the, uh, the this is also uh, highest uh, model will come with the GPS navigation included. That too, it, it won't be real-time. It is basically done through an offline update. Um, a map is connected. So, if you now, by, by following this model, you get a real-time GPS uh, uh, navigation in your car. Something like what your mobile phone can give you. You also get it in a car and you are able to comfortably manage your map. So, there are a lot of direct and hidden indirect benefits 
both to the insurance companies as well as to the consumers. Okay, uh, one of the things I wanted to conclude uh, on this uh, uh, is uh, yesterday I read when I was collecting this data uh, in the US. Um, now with the COVID pandemic hitting big time, a lot of people have come forward. Okay, a lot of road users have come forward, and they are asking the insurance companies. I am not using my car now. I am. I have lost my job. I am not using my car. I am. I am sitting at home, and my car is not used at all or my car usage has come down very well why should i pay the same insurance i don't want to pay the same insurance so they are now asking them to reduce insurance so imagine the kind of benefit that it gives us also apart from the insurance company now this is actually being considered uh, by uh, the uh, us insurance uh, group and they are talking about it big time now to see how they can bring down the insurance premium uh, because the car is not now imagine a car is parked in garage um, three months and i am not taking it out or should i pay in it so my insurance premium can come down whenever i, I want it so this is something that it has come very recently this was something that came just 24 hours ago okay so it can do multiple horizons to give you value so when you have a dynamic model that is what that is what technology can do 10 years ago this was never possible now with multiple models in place customers consumers are bound to gain as much as the insurance companies are bound to gain. on that note i will move on to the uh, second case study let me just check uh, quickly if there are any questions so that uh, i can answer before i move on to the on that note i will move on to the uh, second case study just check uh, there are any questions so that uh, participants can either type your question in the chat box otherwise you can unmute your speaker and you can ask the questions participants can transforming guest experience through iot so who are the guests we are still too far away from entertaining our guests like this okay our guests as in guests who come to our homes okay it is still possible but we are little far away from that uh, uh, we are still from making that as probable or reality uh, but uh, this is something that uh, uh, which is already in place in uh, lot of hotels five star seven star uh, hotels which we are going to talk about now so what you see here i'm not sure how many of you are able to understand but uh, as we go from here uh, you will be able to understand five star seven star uh, hotels which we are going to talk about now so what you see here we are all used to this right we have all traveled we have stayed in multiple hotels uh, on business meetings some of us have also got a chance to stay in star hotels five star seven stars we have attended meetings in hotels a lot of things right um, resorts guest houses uh, anything anywhere we have stayed so we just call the hotel and book check in i go check in i make the payment i make the advance payment or i uh, make the full payment i occupy the room so i want to eat something i make an order i book a room service i go if i am if i also consume alcohol i go to the bar i can have it or i can ask them to supply my room i can do all of that i want to eat something laundry service housekeeping I need an extra towel. I need an extra soap. I need the shampoo. I can ask them to get me, or I need to wash my clothes. I can always ask somebody to come and pick up my laundry clothes. I can do that. Housekeeping. I need an extra. Yeah. Order drinks whenever I want to have. Feel like having something. There is a spa attached to the uh, hotel. I'm very tired at the end of the day. I want available spa service. I can go. What do I do in all these things? I make a call, or I press the bell. Right. I I always call the housekeeping. I call the room service. I call the reception. I do all of that. Suddenly, uh, my TV in my room is not working. I call the housekeeping guy. So there are for everything. There is a uh, call that I need to make. They have given a um, booklet in which multiple numbers are given. I use that, and then I'll be able to make a call. This is how typically um, I I uh, work on. whenever i go into hotel now 
how this is going to be or how this is being transformed is what you are going to see. Um, I, I uh, work on. Okay. What is IoT model? Now, how so it can be an AI powered booking. Okay. I can I can make a booking through my mobile. I can make a booking through a, a AI chatbot. Um, and then I can I can just log into their uh, hotel's website and there are AI over chatbots, AI powered conversations which are going on. I can use any of that and book. I can go to any online portal. I can make a booking. I can I can put my preferences. I can do all of that. Ah. This is what you saw in the previous slide. I can go to any online portal. Have you ever seen a robot managing the front desk? Have you ever seen a dinosaur managing the front desk? It has become reality. It is being done now. Okay. Have you ever seen a we have always seen a receptionist welcoming us in a star hotel. Um, in the night you go, you may not see a women receptionist. There will be a male receptionist who will welcome you. Then uh, you check in, then he, somebody will come, he will take you to the room and then uh, you put your things there and take rest or he will guide you on various things and then come back. Today, we are going to talk about that. There are hotels in China and in Japan. Uh, in China, they have, they have brought in a set of robots who manage the entire guest experience. Right from the time you check in, there are no keys to the room. The robots take, take care China, they have, Okay. Um, there's just a card. You use the card and get inside. You use the card and come out. And then the robots help you carry the luggage. If you need to keep your luggage in a clock room for some time, they, they can do that. They know where they have kept, from where they have to be taken. You never will get the wrong luggage. That is also managed by a robots. A dinosaur, basically, that is also a robot in the form of a dinosaur. They have made them as receptionists in a hotel in Japan, okay? And they manage the entire checking checkout process. They are the first in the world to implement that, to introduce that. So imagine the kind of guest experience that you are going to have when you check into a hotel. And they manage the entire checking checkout process. Okay, you check into a smart room and uh, um, then your data about you is synced into every electronic device into the mobile. What does it mean? I will I will explain this to you. Okay. When you enter a room, and, uh, okay. Um, now, what do you see in the room? There are lights. Okay. There are there is an AC. There is a TV, smart TV there. Then there are uh, uh, there is a heater or there is a. Uh, okay. Now, what do you see? In um, what else is there? Um, you have the uh, refrigerator attached. You have the laundry service attached, and then you have. Uh, some electronic devices such as uh, a coffee making machine will be there for you. A whole lot of um, uh, appliances are there. Then there are curtains which are there. Now, each and every every item in the room is attached with an IoT device, a sensor. There is a sensor that is attached to each of this. So using this, you will be able to monitor, you'll be able to manage the entire room from your mobile or from a tablet. How does it work? Okay, let's assume I'm a guest. I have gone and checked into yeah, Star Hotel, ITC Grand Chala Sharan. I have checked in. First time I'm getting inside, so my data is collected. Okay, and they basically the default values are set, and then somebody will come and explain to you how to use the IoT device, IoT managed uh, UI interface, which is given to you on the tab. Or the moment you check into the hotel, a number, a number is registered, and you can download an app, and then that app takes care of the entire thing until you check out. Both are Okay. Now, the moment you are allotted a room, that entire room is presented in the form of a visual on your device. I don't know how you are able to visualize this. Now, I have a room, I am sitting in a room, and in front of me there is a TV, to my back there is an AC, Okay, is the unit, and to my right there is a refrigerator. To my left there is a curtain, and the exit entrance door is on the right side. Near to that there is a washroom. This is my room design, and I am sitting on the bed in front of the TV. To my left I have a refrigerator. So let's just visualize like this. Now, when you check into the hotel, when you see the device, be it an iPad or a notepad or a note or on your phone. You will see the visual 
space of the room on your device when you see the device and each of that will have a control on your device or on your so we will to touch the ac button immediately ac will be switched on of the room on you can test uh, define you can set the temperature on the device you don't need to take the remote you don't need to get up and go switch on the ac you can do it on the device immediately ac will you want to turn on the tv you can turn on the tv from your device define you want to watch switch it off you can switch it off you want to order room service for a particular item set of items to be delivered at 8 am tomorrow you can, you can do that using the device you want to watch somebody okay room service guy has come he has knocked the door you don't need to get up and go there you can see who is standing there at 8 am in front of outside your room in your device you know this room service guy somebody you can go there you don't need to go there you can open the room open the door you see your device you can see comes delivers he goes out the door is closed in your device you want to make a coffee at 6 o'clock in the morning you have a button to do that you can open the and uh, you are going to sleep now and you want the light to be dim which not be a normal lighting you want a dim light you can dim the light make a coffee at 6 o'clock in the morning you are comfortable sleeping in dim light for one hour then it will be switched off you can automatically set that in dim in the device normal you want the curtains to be open at 6 a.m in the morning so that you get some natural light you can set it up on your device on your phone on or your ipad so the entire management of your room can be done from your device this is the beautiful part and it doesn't end here let's assume i have come to a hotel i have stayed there for two days and i have checked out i come to the same hotel six months later now when i check in my preferred settings suppose i like the temperature ac temperature 24 somebody likes at 22 then the device will tell what is the uh, optimum temperature that i prefer it can tell analytics it can tell the hotel so when i check in the default temperature will be set automatically as 22 or 23 so i don't need to go on this check in my lights should be dimmed off at 10 o'clock and then switched off at 1 hour that is my preference it can be saved as a preference against me so when i come next time i don't need to do that I like to open the curtains at six a.m. in the morning. That can be set by default. All these things, once it is done, they are stored as under settings under your profile, and you will be able to automatically manage. Let's assume I am. I have checked into ITC Cholaj ITC uh, uh, Sharatan in Chennai, and I am going to Maurya Sharatan in Delhi. Okay. Now, both are Sharatan groups. and if both use the same software now when i go to delhi these settings also can be seen by delhi team they know or oh, this guest is coming this is how this is chennai let me see what i can do they can manage that that is also possible and let's assume i am coming into the hotel i am checking into the hotel and i am in a very happy mood okay i have come I have come for a business trip. I am going to make all billion dollars in this opportunity. I am very happy. I am coming into the the front desk sees me happy. You know, such a happy mood. Very happy. And I am going to check into my room. There can be a nice, good, fast beat song that can be played in the room that will pep up my mood. Suppose I am very sad. My day didn't go well. I am very low. Something to cheer me up. They can play later music. So based on the 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 uh, uh, parameters. all these things can be managed by the front end desk as well as by the iot desk one more one more example i always like to sleep in two pillows the hotel gives me only one pillow by default okay my 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 uh, i i like i prefer two pillows and uh, i have asked for an additional pillow or i have asked for a headrest extra headrest now this goes into my profile so when i check in next time the guy will ask you sir do you need another pillow or by default when i make a booking when i come into the room there are two pillows kept there is a extra headrest kept in my room imagine how good i will feel as a guest when i check in this is possible if i or by default when i make a booking this is how the hotel guest experience is being transformed from a traditional model into an iot model this is possible if i yeah i was just taking you through all of this you can you can see this and not it doesn't end there let's assume that i have uh, i have uh, uh, amazon prime account i have a netflix account 
okay and uh, my mobile is uh, uh, configured or my laptop my mobile is configured let's assume my mobile is configured. or my ipad is configured. amazon prime okay. now when i log into my room and i check into my room my mobile number is registered against my room. so i can operate my amazon prime on the tv from my mobile using my account i don't need to use my phone i can watch on the tv directly because they have seen similarly on netflix similarly any of the smart tv channels that i want to watch i'll be able to watch from using this so it is not a hotel account i'm using it is my own account i'm using so my preferences i like to watch comedy movies my preferences are set when i log into my account immediately those comedy movies will be shown i don't need to come here and be set hotel account so those are the additional um, advantages that you can present to the yes when i log into I, I already covered this uh, as part of ah, experience virtual reality. Okay, this is one of the uh, terms that is catching up with time now, especially on the entertainment sector. Um, I am sure all of you know what is virtual reality. Basically, it is nothing but um, you are uh, taken through. It's an AI. It's an AI. You you are taken through a kind of an experience of how the hotel will look like. Hotel looks like. You are taken to a room or in your room. Uh, there is a virtual reality they have created in which you see how this hotel is. What are the uh, facilities that the hotel has? Okay, I don't need to go and ask. I don't need to go and refer a book. I can see everything on the uh, virtual reality page. Then, suppose I am I have gone to London for the first time and I want to visit two three places. I want to know where which, which places I can visit. I am in a hotel in London and uh, when I check in, when I get into virtual reality mode. Then immediately it will show me what are the nearby areas that I can visit. So it becomes a cross-selling, upscaling, not only for the hotel but also for the marketers. So there are lot of organizations, lot of shopping malls that will have a tie-up with the with the hotel. For example, I am staying in a hotel. Let's assume I am staying in Chennai, the other regency in Mount Road, which is very close to Express Avenue Mall. Now I am going from the other regency to Express Avenue Mall. Now immediately when i check in to express avenue they know that i am staying in another region so there is a discount coupon that is offered to me so the moment i buy something in uh, express avenue mall i get a 20% discount so imagine the kind of cross selling upscaling that you are able to provide through a vr product which is again possible through artificial intelligence and the iot devices that are connected imagine basically what happens here Let's assume a hotel has 150 rooms, 200 rooms. Now, the, imagine the kind of data that comes in from here through various devices, and how do you analyze it? How do you give the best experience to the guests, and how do you also optimally serve your guests? For example, I don't need AC all night in the room. Okay, that's my preference. I need only two hours. Then automatically I can set it so the hotel saves building, saves electricity. Now, otherwise, what I will do? I can set my remote, I can set my timer, and all that. Still, there is no need to worry. Some okay. For example, there is a centralized air conditioner which is there. Not you won't have an independent air conditioner in all these rooms, right? You have a centralized air conditioner. You may not be able to set the time of day. So it's difficult, basically. So the AC is invariably on. Now you can do, you can control that, you can save electricity, you can save energy using it. You may not be able to set the time of day. So Yeah. Now, now similarly when i want to check out finally i am done i have stayed i have done my stay i need to leave now when i want to leave all i need to do is from the from the phone i will just message i am going to check out i am two step then by the time i go to the uh, front desk my bill is ready my payment is done i can leave. if the, the dinosaurs are managing that you need to pay using the card and then they will validate it you can leave then so the, here what is the significant difference that we are making we are enhancing the guest experience in a hotel now if you have got this kind of experience in a hotel will you ever go to some other hotel and stay especially when your organization pays your bill you will not want to. that is the model that is the attraction that is how they are doing it in a hotel will you ever go to some other hotel especially when you are yeah, we talked about this hotels have their guest data preferences etc using that they can pre configure the uh, settings in addition to that iot devices also give plenty of data 
and uh, so once i leave now i know exactly how this this guest spent his time if i have spent uh, two hours browsing a particular channel in the hotel room then next time when i come in the default channel will be that so when i log into the my device my default channel will be my most favorite channel we don't need to set it the hotel the system will set it up for you Yeah. You can see this is a hotel in China where a robo is serving tea. Okay, this is this is actually something uh, they have done in China, and what they are saying. Okay, I will also add that. Okay, the next picture also is similar. Uh, a robo is taking order in a in a restaurant. Okay, robo is taking a order from a customer in a restaurant. And what do they do? Why do they do this? First of all, the customers are thrilled. Okay, we are all used to a guy or a girl coming and taking orders from us. Okay, and I remember uh, probably 15 years ago, 15 years ago, I think, 10-15 years ago, first time when I had gone to Sarana Bhavan in Chennai, the guy who came and he took the order. Okay, he took the order, and when he confirmed the order, he took it on a handheld device. Immediately, that order goes to the kitchen. Earlier. he will take the order on a piece of paper write it test number we will go and hand it over to the kitchen that's how earlier the model was now the guy who takes it on the device when he confirms the order it goes to the kitchen if i am ordering a combination of a south indian and a north indian item also i choose for example now all the south indian items will go to the south indian kitchen north indian items will go to the other kitchen and juice will go to the third one so based on the counter items are mapped and they get the notification and immediately they start to i found this was fabulous north indian items will go this was something out of the world i felt now we have gone way ahead where robots come and take the order robots come and deliver right items not a wrong thing now why do they do this as i told you one reason is customers feel good obviously you feel you feel wow this is nice second the cost of maintaining a robo is much cheaper than the cost of salary that you pay to an employee okay initially you will incur fairly decent capital expenditure to buy the device to get the iot setup etc once you do that salary that you are recurring expenses become much expenses becomes very very manageable much cheaper and i read that already this hotel has replaced 50% of their staff with robots and those staffs are being asked to do some other tasks they don't do this task they are into some other tasks now they are planning to replace entire team by robots majority of the teams by robots and those staffs so eventually what happens is because they are able to save significant cost on this they are going to pass it to the customers now if i have to pay 10 euros to stay in a hotel in a london in a, in a london hotel significant cost after this i will end up paying 8 euros so one the customer gets enhanced experience to seeing the robo two he is paying 2 euros less than what he was paying earlier so obviously there are more people who are going to come to the hotel okay now i can i can imagine somebody asking this question so it means it will lead to loss of jobs not necessarily now you that is what i told yesterday also you need to be cross skill okay now you need to have multiple skills so that you can go work somewhere else secondly whether it is possible for all the hotels to implement this no that is what i think we are not there yet so there will still be you need to have 
eighty percent, seventy percent of the hotels which will run on a traditional model, where you will still be able to go on top. So the opportunities will continue to be there. It won't be exhausting. But yeah, it is nice to have a newer technology that is taking you through the processes. Where you will still be able to go on top. So as you can see here, there is a robot sitting in the reception, and there is also a dancer which is sitting in the reception, standing in the reception. Talking to a guest there, so this is a this is what I told you. This is the hotel um, uh, um, uh, in uh, Japan, which is supposed to be the first hotel in the world that has introduced this kind of a service. First hotel, and nowhere else uh, have they done this. This hotel is called Hen Na H E N N space N A. It means that's a Japanese word. It means in English strange. This is something new. This is something strange that you don't see everywhere. So they have already done it in Tokyo, and whoever this is Tokyo, please have a look at this. Yeah, see, a robot is conversing, communicating with the guest, and uh, guiding the guest on what needs to be done on the device. So, yeah, transformation. It's all about transformation. How technology can transform the world. How okay, technology can give us new experiences? Did we ever imagine these kind of things happening? No. And imagine today this is happening. Ten years from now, something else will come. Twenty years from now, completely three times bigger than what IoT can do today may come. So this is going to be evolving continuously. It is not going to stop anytime. I'm going to show you. Uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to show you something. um so this is going to be evolving continuously okay i'm going to show i am not sure if the video will be playing for you but uh, if it plays great otherwise i will give the site name uh, you can you can go and uh, play it okay okay i am not sure if the video will be playing for you but uh, if it plays great otherwise i will give the site name uh, you can you can go and uh, play it okay How was it? How was it? Okay, we have come to the uh, end of. Uh, did you Did you guys see that? Oh, okay. You saw that. Wonderful. I'm happy. Okay. Excellent. I'm 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 glad. We are far away from this. Yes, <laughs> no doubt about that. Did you guys see so that? it is it is to take a lot of time. Oh, okay. Uh,
it will take some time it will take some time india we are using iot uh, not a in a big time again as i as i told the acceptance of technology has to come to defense they are using a um, lot of lot of defense related stuff they are using iot uh, it is also catching up on the automobile sector hospitality sector a lot of people are moving to hotel as i as i showed you now uh, they are uh, uh, going through security to see there is no solution to manage security security is basically a protocol right today are you able to okay internet came at least in india effectively we have been using internet from 1994 1994 or even before that now have we been able to have a full proof internet security today no we still having hacking issues we still having somebody uh, uh, you know uh, uh, creating a problem for us now so including including happen so i don't think i don't think um, a uh, security there will be a solution to solve security issues but the security protocols will keep improving will keep evolving so obviously at some point of time we will have we can expect to have a full proof security but it is going to be a long way it is not going to happen now improving will keep evolving let me turn on the video also so that you can see we will have we can expect to have a full proof security okay but then um, somebody has said uh, my voice was cracking maybe the problem was at your end i guess what is the role of iot in the field of education from teachers and students perspective then uh, uh, currently as we are all going through as we are all going through the uh, uh, corona pandemic i think this is the right time where iot can be put to use lot of lot of things can be done lot of uh, teaching can be done using iot devices uh, you can monitor the students you can uh, do lot of behavioral aspects etc you can monitor through the iot devices but i am not sure if we are there yet uh, maybe at a something like an oxford university can look at implementing iot uh, based on the uh, infrastructure that they have because here what happens in a hotel you are going to have 100 people 500 people in, in an educational institution you are going to have 1000 people so to collect that kind of data to analyze, analyze and create a setup there it is going to be a challenge but it is possible at least you know in terms of the faculty management part you can definitely look at iot as one of the things it will take time army yes army they are doing lot of iot on army so what i said defense has been the one of the first consumers of iot uh, even now a lot of uh, 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 information is being gathered especially on the border related stuff are being done using iot devices but due to signal and the protocols they have not been able to do but there is still a lot of research going on on the defense side to implement iot they are one of the first consumers of using iot devices energy efficiency yes we we already discussed that uh, environmental uh, no environmental health will not take a back seat no i don't think see why would it take they, they are all they are all uh, they don't emit emission they, they are not emission driven devices right they don't emit anything a healthy hazard as to the uh, to the environment they don't they don't and uh, today if in that case the mobile okay, look at the mobile usage in india uh, has it created environmental problem for us no but when you throw the mobile okay that is a problem in that case when the mobile is thrown on the dustbin on the trash that is a problem so managing the e waste is a bigger task than managing this part that is a problem these devices will help improve saving the environment for example you are managing the traffic with policemen today so many policemen on the road imagine policemen are replaced by iot saving the okay i want a device search which monitor the entire movement you can put them for the back end activity they are not going to be in any way affecting the environment it is only going to conserve energy for us in fact it is going to save energy that's what we saw right it is going to save energy for us. so it is definitely not going to affect the environment it is not going to pollute the environment it is human beings who are polluting the environment it is we who throw plastic in the on the road it is we who throw trash on the road it is we who are polluting the environment and not these devices let us be very honest about it and let us try to change this is we who throw plastic on the road it is we who throw trash on the road 
Yes, it has to be on all the time. That is what. See, the technology is improving. They won't be emitting. They will be heat emission. Obviously, you cannot when a device is on, when a mobile is on, and you speak for thirty minutes and you touch the backside, the mobile is on. Natural. It will. See, that is what. It is the technology that is improving, right? Now, ten years ago, the kind of batteries that we had and what we have today, they have improved so much. right so the heat emission also has reduced same way these devices also will improve over a period of time why has it taken 10 years for a technology to mature even though it is not mature i would say iot is still in nascent stage that is why you have so many iot platforms today we we saw that yesterday right why if you know, i have two main mobile devices android ios right we have only those two when it comes to uh, uh, desktops or laptops what do we have windows linux linux is typically used in the side server side when you have ios do we have anything else other than that macintosh nothing else we have but yesterday we saw there are 15 20 different oss which are used for ios for the iot there are so many iot platforms which are there everybody has an iot platform today now why because the technology itself is still growing technology itself is still and uh, evolving so at some point we will know the value so we need to wait and see now why yes technology is already implemented in india it is there it is already there in some of the hotels also what we saw now maurya sheraton delhi you can see what we just saw uh, the the uh, hotel experience that we saw now it, by the way that organization is based out of indore in india who implemented this they are an iot specialized organization and they have implemented this in london dubai singapore and in some hotels in india so to answer your question iot has come into india it is a question it is it is a it is a, it is a point of usage how much are we using it which are the sectors they are using it requires investment let us be honest with you it requires investment we don't we will not get the return on the same day we need to invest on that the top organizations are coming forward to create a iot infrastructure they are managing it the platforms are being set up so that you don't need to invest on the hardware the server side you can still manage with the devices side that is what platforms help you do so gradually once we start getting the benefit out of the technology more people will embrace the technology or usage will come we are going to see this we are going to see this in every departmental store down the line we are going to see in every mall down the line this is going to be there and we have to embrace that we have to learn that we have to adapt towards that that iot is a technology that is going to stay and we need to be part of that this is going to be there and we have to embrace that we have to learn that we have to adapt towards that that iot is a technology that is going to stay yeah, that will be there yes you are right ma'am absolutely correct there is a there is a message from um, uh, ms atya bansal from uh, hong kong you have mentioned that they are using iot in several uh, um, um, places even in education they are using but the students have said that they are feeling lonely they are feeling boredom because they don't get to interact with a teacher in person yes it is going to be there it is the it is it is a industry where we want to use that's what i said now right now at this point of time the online education as it is providing today iot is going to be important it is the it is the way we want to use it yesterday now i read iit bombay has announced that the entire year they are going to do online courses iot is going to be important okay entire year there is going to be no college no university IIT Bombay is going to do the classes only on online mode. So imagine what kind of support, technological support that we need. Now the question of survival. That is where this technology is going to help. You. Whether you can make it a practice throughout three sixty five days, it may not work everywhere. It may work for a hotel industry because the consumer there is not going to be there every day. Okay, they is going to get the benefit out of that. Whereas when it comes to our education, when it comes to students, you may not be able to achieve it because obviously you 
need to have a fierce connection. You need to have that eye contact. Imagine the parents are replaced by IoT devices. Students, imagine that scenario. What will the children think? What will the kids at home feel? Same thing. So it depends on the use case. It depends on where you can use, how you can use, what you can use it for. Okay. There are a lot of devices that are that can be used just to you know make the user happy, make the user feel good. There are a lot of devices that can be used to get data out of that. Example, the first one we saw, UBI, even in the hotel industry, a robo serving coffee will keep the customer happy, but I may not get much out of that data. Whereas the customer's uh, preferences that he uses in the hotel room are important to me so that I'll be able to use that. So obviously, this is the way things are going to go. Where we want to use, how we want to use, nobody is forcing anybody to adapt to technology. So is it suiting me? Will it suit my domain? How can I use it? Whether I can use it once in a week or seven days in a week, it is up to me. Anything that is overdosed, it is going to be a person. So let us not do that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your uh, 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 sharing your your knowledge, your experience. On that. I, I I mean, I will I will do some research on education. I I didn't do that though, but I will definitely get in and do something. Sharing your your knowledge, your experience. I will I will do some research on education. Okay. Uh, so uh, what what did we do for three days? Let me let me quickly take you through and uh, uh, conclude on that note. First today we covered what is IoT and uh, what is the technology all about, how has the okay, um, so mankind evolved over a period of ages and how the technology is evolving, how the internet has evolved, how the IoT is going to evolve, where is it today and how is it going to go, what kind of technologies can be used, all that we saw on the first day, industries that are using, uh, various industries that are using IoT we saw. Moving on from there, second day we saw specifically uh, uh, how IoT is being used on the uh, agricultural side. Following that, uh, we went through uh, technology layers. We saw the four layers of technology yesterday, device sensor, followed by the networking layer, where the signals are passed, connectivity is established. Then comes the business layer, architecture, where the business layer and application layer, uh, state security layer is there. Then you have the business layer and the uh, application layer. So we, we saw at length on that, the tools and stack, technology stack that is being used in software. And finally, I, I was able to take a couple of case studies which I could take with you. And uh, the the IoT is it's an ocean. To be able to cover in three hours, three and a half hours is not possible. So I could only touch upon what is important and how we can use this. Now this should have united you to do some research. To go back to the drawing room, to take one area. Suppose you like to explore research on the education side, please do. Somebody wants to explore an agricultural side, please do. You identify which is of interest to you, try to go deep into that, do some research and share your knowledge. See, the importance is sharing knowledge. Whatever we learn, we must pass it to others. So if you are able to pass it to somebody and that somebody is able to pass it to somebody, that's how the knowledge spread, education spreads. So please keep doing that and very sure that we are all in for an exciting journey ahead. IoT is going to do us and that we are going to do On that note, I will want to thank all of you for patiently listening to me. And uh, I am not an IoT professional. On the first day itself, I told I come with a different background on the IT services side. Still, I have been part of IoT on some engagements. So thank you for uh, inviting me to, for this session. Thank you, Nadira ma. I have a huge respect for you. Uh, I have, I, I, I don't have words to explain that. And thank you so much for calling me for this session. And thank you, Shaheen ma'am, for uh, moderating the session for the three days. And thank you all the faculty members who were part of that. Yesterday, I got a call from somebody in Chandigarh. Uh, Mr. Chaturvedi called from Chandigarh. Uh, he said that, uh, I was surprised that um, somebody joined from Chandigarh. He said that uh, I got an invitation through a link and then I participated. I could not open the GPT. Can you share the video? He said I will send it. So, this is how technology can, this is what technology can do. People from any part of the world. See, I'm very, very happy to see somebody from Hong Kong who joined this session. So, this is what technology can do. We don't, we don't need to worry where we are. 
you can still absorb you can still uh, imbibe the knowledge in sessions so thank you so much for each and every one of you who have joined this session and who were part of this uh, three day program so i learned a lot trust me in these three days for this 3 3 and a half hour session i i would have spent about 12 hours of learning to be able to come so i did lot of learning i have learned a lot i am going to take an area and i am going to do some research on it so i will hand it over to uh, shagin ma'am on that note and i wish all of you all the very best in your career in your future endeavors and the next couple of months i think we need to go through we are in a very critical situation so let us all stay safely let us use the technology as much as possible and look for a better india better world ahead in the coming months thank you so much and i will pass it on to uh, shaheen so let us all stay safely let us use the technology i will lunch one minute look for a better india better world ahead in the coming thank you so much and i will pass it on to shaheen undue mute i will lunch one minute uh, okay now uh, no, one minute now you can unmute uh, now you can unmute Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So it was indeed a very good session. I don't know how these three days have ended so soon. Uh, <laughs> Still, we want to hear hear more from you. Yeah, now you can unmute. Really, I very wish... useful. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, anything people will get bored. If they hear my voice one more day, they will they will run away. No, actually, your voice is so much impressive. That is, it is the your voice only which is the God gift. I think, which is attracting attracting every participant towards you. Oh, Moreover, you, your presentation is also very super. Thank, thank you, sir. So thank you for accepting the invitation uh, from our college. My pleasure. My, I will definitely visit your college. Uh, I'm due to visit your college to. Uh, when once things settle down, once the travel restrictions are removed and things are safe to travel, I will definitely come over. I want to see your college. You are always invited, sir. Always welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Jay Chandra, ma'am. I saw Jay Chandra, ma'am, on all the three days. I saw Amir Kandi, ma'am. they are all i will definitely come over extremely nice people they, uh, they have terrific knowledge they imbibe knowledge they share knowledge so many students some of their students are working with me now i am i am really blessed to know all of you it's, it's wonderful i don't have any words uh, to, to talk about them they are so good so we will end the session with the formal vote of thanks thank you vote of our thanks will be done by our assistant professor of computer application department mrs vimala bharati they are so good so we will end the session with the formal vote of thanks vote of our thanks will be done by our assistant professor of computer application department mrs vimala bharati uh she may have to unmute herself to be able to speak very pleasant good afternoon to one and all who are attending this faculty development program i am very pleased to propose vote of thanks at the end of this 3 day fpp on all that you wanted to know about iot first and foremost thank the god for making this fpp a grand success my sincere thanks goes to our honorable chairman sm mohammed yusuf our secretary hajiani smh sharmila our executive director alhaj prls hamid ibrahim mohammed sir trust for their constant support and cooperation my big thanks goes to our madam principal dr ar nadira banu kamal she is one who always encourages us to shine in future she is the person with full of energy kindness love and care ma'am thank you for all your support and advice we will be always grateful to you ma'am i extend my sincere thanks to our speaker mr ishwaran ram vice president sanpro software logo authorized partner for presenting the topic so interestingly and focusing on every aspects behind the iot technology thank you sir and i am very thankful to my hod mrs anwara shagin for her support positivity and encouragement thank you ma'am i thank all the participants without whom this fpp won't be possible once again i thank one and all present here support positivity and encouragement thank you ma'am i thank all the participants without whom this fpp won't be possible once again i thank 
Okay, can we end the session? Anything else? Yes, sir, definitely. But we don't want to end the session. Just <laughs> want to hear more from you. Okay. No, I am. I am happy. Uh, maybe we can pick up some other topic. Uh, I'm yes, sure. Sure. Definitely. Ah, yes. So yes. one last thing I'd like to talk. Ikhat Patil Kumar. Shall we allow him? Ah, yes, ma'am. Uh, Nadira, ma'am. Jazakallah khair. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for giving me a chance to speak. I like to thank each one of you who has done this program. Really, it's wonderful. And I am in Saudi Arabia. What all things Ishwaran sir has explained, it is going on here. It's really true. Like cars, when they go in speed, they take the click and you have to pay the fine. Everything is 100% true really and hotels what all everything is true i hope this thing is implemented in india very soon you know we are like mouths we are ready to settle anywhere when you are from india but people those who are born in saudi arabia or any other place like younger generation they don't want to go to india you know we are like because of the facility which is which is not there but today or tomorrow we have to go to our destiny which is india so can you please tell when this implementation will be done in our country? It will take time. See, one thing we have to see is uh, um, we are a large country. Okay? Our size is very large and we are still, we are improving in terms of the network connectivity. We are improving. Today, I go to my village, I have connectivity. My, my uh, 3G works there, if not 4G. So we are definitely improving. It is a question of adapting. We are adapting slowly. We are always slow movers on technology, but I can I can I can expect something like that happening in India on the consumer side probably in the next five years. I think that is my gut. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Very nice of you. Very nice of you to, to hear somebody yeah, sir, from Saudi Arabia. Hello, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you, ma'am? So, how are you? I fine, sir. I'm Very fine. good. Very good. Yes, Very good. Yes, good to good to see you here. I, I saw your name. I was so happy to see you. Thank you. I'm also very nice. Very nice. How is Madurai? How is your college? Yes, sir. Very good. Our our faculty members. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. I would like to thank uh, the management and uh, the principal, Dr. Nadira Banukamal, and uh, the uh, head of the department and all the faculty, those who have put uh, the, that is, uh, so much um, work towards uh, arranging such kind of uh, workshops. As a, they have arranged so many workshops continuously, they are doing, effortlessly they are doing. So, um, um, I have admired the way how they are uh, organizing the workshop. It's, uh, it's, go, it's went very well, sir. And thank then you your session, all the three-day sessions, uh, very excellent. Already we know it. Uh, <laughs> actually, very excellent session we have huh. attended. And then, you uh, all gave me confidence to speak, actually, you know, on these <laughs> topics. Uh, when I met you all, uh, that's when I started exploring a lot more. So I'm, I should be thanking you, Nadira ma'am, uh, Angair Gani ma'am, your entire team you know, who called me, who keep calling me for uh, uh, I feel proud of uh, her students, sir. I am her student. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. She she's, she's very proud to say that, um, <laughs> that you are her student and you are the HOD in a premium, premier college in uh, Madurai. So she always talks about you. I also saw Joyce uh, in, in the meeting today. Joyce. I'm so happy. I, I got to know you all through her. So uh, the route goes yes. from there. So it's very nice. Very nice to see you all. Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your presence, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Jayachandra, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I will share my uh, contact details. People have said some of them didn't note down. I'm sharing it in the chat uh, uh, window. You can note down. I'm typing my email ID and uh, uh, my mobile number. In fact, I got a call from somebody yesterday, I told you, from Chandigarh. I'm giving my number also. So anything, anytime you need any help, uh, you can call me. Suppose I'm in a meeting, anything, I may not answer the phone, but I will call back. Yeah, I have shared my email ID and my phone number. I hope you have all noted down.
um, I will I will put it up in uh, the public. I think it's going to private. So I put it up in the public window so everybody can. Yeah, I have shared now. All right. The Atiya ma'am has commented that you are an A plus speaker. Wow. Who, who commented? Atiya ma'am from Hong Kong. Oh, Hong Kong. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, that's very nice of you to say that. Very nice of you. I'm okay. IoT is a is a is a nascent technology. Nobody is an expert in it, but it is a question of understanding the model, understanding how it works, and then putting it back. That is how I learned about IoT. So if, to hear that from you, I'm 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 glad. I think you made my day. Thank you. So all the good things has to come to an end. So the same. Today we have came to an end of the session. Thank you so, thank you so much. Thank you to all the participants also for being with us. Participant, you can get the feedback link from the chat box. Thank you, and look forward to uh, meeting you all again. Uh, Definitely. Another session sure. whenever uh, they call me, and I'll be happy to be part of uh, any 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 knowledge sharing sessions that we can engage with. Thank you again. Thank you, Nadira, ma'am. Thank you for your uh, invitation. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.